Hi, it's Nick from the Run Testers, and this is our first run review of the Coros Vertex 2. So there is a whole lot of new stuff going on with the Coros Vertex 2. Uh, we've only had the watch kind of 24 hours before this, uh, before its launch date. So, so forgive me if I uh, forget a couple of things. But in general, what's happened here is Coros has chucked in a load of features into the watch to make it more of a direct competitor to something like the Garmin Phoenix at the high end of the market. Previously, we had the Coros Vertex, which was a you know very rugged watch, but actually in terms of features, it, it kind of matched up more with mid-range watches than things at the top end of the market. That's not the case anymore. Uh, Coros is throwing absolutely everything at the Vertex 2, including a brand new feature I'm quite excited about in the shape of more accurate GPS. Some features that will immediately stand out are the music and maps on the watch. Uh, you're getting topographical and street view maps. Uh, these are all offline maps. You get a global like landscape or street view map when you buy the watch and then you can download the topographical maps for your region. So now when you load a route onto the Vertex 2 and follow it during a run or ride or whatever, you'll get like a full map to give you a better reference to make it easier to follow that route. You also get an elevation profile when you're out on a run or something, which shows you how much elevation you have left to climb on that route. Basically it's a step up on the breakdown navigation you get on most watches. It comes to music, uh, it's all drag and drop stuff from the computer, uh, kind of you know you plug the vertex in, drag it over and then you can, you can find it on the watch in the music section of the settings. I found it very easy to pair a set of headphones to the vertex too, it's a bit of a faff to get the music on um, and the transfer speed is not that quick but yeah you can put a load of stuff onto the music folder and then obviously listen to it while you're running without your phone. Now the new GPS feature, so what you're getting here is an all satellite dual frequency GPSS chipset. Uh, and what that means is the watch can call on two frequencies at once to give you more accurate GPS data on the run, especially in challenging environments, things like when you're in high buildings or under tree cover. I'm really excited about this feature. <laughs> um, I'm really hoping you know, I get very upset with inaccurate, with poor accuracy GPS, which affects your pacing stats. And yes, yeah, so I was hoping this is going to be a real game changer. We'll see. Uh, the other modes you get are, are GPS only, um, which uh, is just, you know, just uses GPS satellites. And then there's an all satellites mode, which uses GPS, Galileo, GLONASS, all the rest uh, at once. So that's a kind of your three different modes, all of which provide, you know, quite a high level of accuracy. But the idea being the new dual frequency mode is a, you know, a step up on the standard kind of GPS or GPS plus Galileo you had in the past. So music, new kind of GPS modes, maps, that all sounds like a big battery drain, uh, and it is. But it's fair to say the Vertex 2 is packing an almighty battery to cope with all this new stuff. So even if you go for the most precise mode, uh, you know, the dual frequency mode, you're going to get 50 hours of kind of tracking battery life if you just use gps that's 140 hours and with all satellites turned on that's 90 hours that's the highest i think i've come across obviously the garmin enduro has 80 hours when you're using like gps and galileo or gps and glonass you know this is nudging up to 90 if you're just using those and offering 50 even if you are using this new hyper accurate mode with music that will come down a fair bit but you're still getting i think 30 or 35 hours depending on which gps mode you're using with music um, and there is also an ultra mode, ultra max, which lasts for 240 hours. So, you know, that's essentially forever if you're running for that long. So that's great. Obviously to fit in such a beefy battery, you need a beefy watch and the Vertex 2 is a beefy watch. It's very comparable in kind of size and weight to the Phoenix 6X Pro. So it's about kind of 91 grams. You know, it sits very large on the wrist, especially if you have little wrists like me. Uh, and it's a fair bit heavier actually than the original Vertex, uh, which I think was under 60 grams, despite also being quite a big watch. You're also getting a bigger screen though for your money. Uh, this is now a 1.4 inch screen. Uh, it's a 280 times 280 screen. It's actually pretty nice. I will say that on the run, it was yeah, it's noticeably larger than the Coros Vertex's screen, which um, was a 1.2 inch screen. So yeah, that's a nice improvement to have and makes the little extra bulk worthwhile, I guess. Oh, I should also say it is a touch screen if you're into using kind of touch screens on running watches as I intend to. It can be sometimes be useful when you're using the maps on the watch, but generally I prefer just to use uh, either buttons or indeed the dial you get on the Coros Vertex. It's a three button design with the little dial in the middle there. Coros absolutely loves a dial. Uh, I'm a bit up and down on the dial, but it works, I think, more or less just as well as buttons. Uh, in certain 
situations it can be helpful and in some situations it's a little bit less useful but all in all it's not hard to navigate the menus or your run screens using the dial it's just slightly different to using the kind of standard five button design you've had on other watches uh, another new thing is this can now take an ECG measurement although I don't think it's approved yet uh, you can also kind of measure your heart rate variability by taking a dedicated test where you kind of sit still and rest your fingers on the bezel I think there's going to be a lot more features on that down the line I'd expect in terms of you know actually getting the ECG approved maybe using those HRV stats for kind of generalized measurements that show off you know how stressed your body is at any given time but at the moment it's, it's fairly basic but it's a new addition to the Vertex 2 as well uh, the watch also obviously has Corus's Evo Lab you know training insight tool which was launched recently across the range um, and you can get a good view of that in the new kind of user interface on the watch which is kind of widgets very much in the style of a Garmin uh, you scroll down from your kind of main watch face and you can personalize what widgets you want there in terms of your activity stats your health stats um, uh, things like notifications or indeed the training insights from the Evo Lab thing. So that's the user interface has had a, a welcome revamp, I'd say. It's a slightly more pleasant watch to interact with in general. So Mike, Kieran and I have all got the Vertex uh, to Intertest. Uh, kind I've of just gone out for one run with the watch to kind of give you a early bit of feedback on it, but we'll obviously have a really in-depth full review coming down the line. So I got the Vertex today and kind of took it out for my kind of standard Monday run, which is like an hour easy. Um, I was pretty excited to use it mainly because of the new GPS mode. Uh, one thing that did leap out straight away was how big the screen is. It does allow for a new setup where you can have like up to 10 stats on the watch. Um, 10 stats is too many for me on the run, you know, at a glance. I think six is about where I max out. Uh, it's notable that if you want a HR gauge at the top of your screen, you still can only use up to four stats. Um, I like a gauge, I also like six stats, so you know it's a bit of a shame I can't get both there. Um, the other thing I noticed quite early on was that you don't just get like a maps screen, that like uh, you can't set up as just an existing data screen as yet, as far as I can tell. If you want to have a map, you know, during your run, you need to have a route set up, and then you can see the map and obviously the route on top of it. But it's nice, I think, just to have a map of your run if the maps are there and you can see where you've been and actually just follow it back if you don't want to bother with um, using any navigation features. There is a back to start feature on this, and you can access the maps during a run. Even if you haven't got a route, but you have to you have to hold down the lap button and bring up the toolbox to do that it's not like you know within your running screens that's something i'd like to see added hopefully in the future anyway the main thing i was excited about on this watch was this ultra precise gps mode i'm really obsessive about pacing and gps so like so i know a few you know gps dead spots around me and i took the vertex down to a loop uh, affectionately called the dog loop because there's a crazy dog on it where um i know that gps tends to run a little generous on a lot of watches and actually it bumps up your pace it's very good for sessions actually if you want to feel fast you can go to the dog loop and um get an ultra quick rep in because the gps goes a bit skew if uh, and then i also took you know run from there did a couple laps of that loop and then went into the forest and did some kind of single track running under tree cover and i was running also with my garmin phoenix 6 pro kind of trusty watch i've used it a lot and i know exactly where it struggles basically when it comes to gps so i know for a fact the garmin is a little bit generous on that dog loop and then in the forest it tends to be a little bit harsh actually in terms of pacing it seems to um cut corners a lot more and kind of you know i end up with laps that are slower than i'm actually running you know obviously it's all based on my judgment but fairly experienced runner so i think i know roughly what pace i'm running and if a watch goes a bit crazy i usually can notice it so on the run i was really into the vertex to it did exactly what i hoped it would do so when i went to the dog loop uh, the garmin just suddenly sped me up because basically it adds in a little extra section of the loop um which makes it think i'm running further and faster and the vertex didn't it kind of um stayed at the pace i've been running more or less up to that point and it seemed roughly to be correct uh, then I went to the forest and again the vertex is what I hope it would do like um, my pace was still reasonably consistent even when running uphill on single track you know it roughly matched my effort level where the Garmin had a couple of big spikes on that pace uh, to actually bring the two watches close to in line in terms of total distance covered because the Garmin was fast on the road and then a bit slow in the forest so all in all, I thought, great, this, you know, this is amazing. It actually is accurate, this GPS. It's picking up these single tracks. It's picking up these loops, um, you know, even when there's high buildings around on an industrial estate. However, then I then looked at the GPS tracks in their respective apps after the run, and the Vertex 2 had made all the usual errors that a GPS watch does. It did exactly the same error on the dog loop as most watches, which is to add in a little bit on the back side of the loop. It kind of heads out into a building and comes back, adding a bit of distance. And then in the forest, it seems to have, you know, roughly had the same struggles GPS does under, G under tree cover. You can see at times it's missing the trail. It cuts off too early when I went, you know, for a sharp turn in the forest. I'm not running on the path anymore. It even actually inserted a random road crossing on quite, on a, quite a clear bit of pavement coming out of the forest where the Garmin didn't, like it had me on the right side of the road the whole way. So <laughs> don't know what to say. Like, you know, obviously on the run, it felt really good. And that, I think 
like, like kind of all brands kind of use the accelerometer in the watch to kind of smooth out little GPS quirks on the run. You know, it know, you know, uses the sensors within the watch, you know, if there is a big leap. I think Coros does this better than most actually in terms of smoothing out the um, accuracy of your pacing, you know, when it does notice like, you know, GPS madness. That's why the on your run stats, you know, seemed really good. But uh, in terms of actual GPS tracks, I didn't see a massive improvement, um, which was slightly disappointing because I really was hoping this dual frequency mode was going to be like a magic bullet for my GPS kind of, you know, constant worries and stressing. Um, we'll do a load more testing on it though, and we'll see in the future. I've actually got a half marathon in London uh, this weekend, you know, loads of high buildings. So we'll see how the Vertex 2 does there compared to other watches. Um, and maybe that will show a slightly clearer level of improvement. We'll see. Uh, other notes on it, uh, the heart, Heart rate, uh, actually, it was pretty good first run today. Actually, the chest strap I wore did uh, go a bit nuts in the first two minutes of my run when the Vertex didn't. But after that, um, the Vertex, when the, when the chest strap settled down and was giving me, a, I think, an accurate reading, the Vertex more or less matched it beat for beat. Like, going up hills, it would be a tiny bit slower, you know, in catching up as my heart rate rose, which is what you expect from wrist heart rate. So, yeah, so far that was fine. I'll probably send that pairing a chest strap with it just because, you know, I always think it is more accurate. And I do want, you know, the Evo Lab training analysis data to be accurate. But yeah, the heart rate was fine today. Um, and in terms of battery life, a bit weird. So I started at 81%. Uh, I ran an hour of this ultra accurate mode enabled and I still had 81% at the end of the run. I don't know if I can trust anything about the battery stats in this watch just now because it is like an early model before launch. There's a few glitches happening. At the, at the moment, it won't charge past 97%, which is a, which is a problem I hope will go away. Um, so yeah. I imagine the batteries can be very good. It is still a chorus, which have always done very well when it comes to battery. So yeah, overall, after one run, I, I do want to see a lot more from that dual frequency kind of GPSS mode. I, I was hoping that was going to be a game changer, and at the moment, it kind of isn't. Uh, the new features otherwise are nice, like music seems quite well implemented. The maps, I want a map screen uh, on my running screens, but generally having maps in the watch, I think, is always a plus point. It just makes following routes that little bit easier because you have context. You know, you can see what other paths there are and then choose the right path. I think it's always important. But I think it is going to need that GPS to be a bit of a killer uh, if it are, is going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Phoenix because it is coming in at the same price and at the moment Garmin offers a slicker experience for sure. Um, all these kind of features are better baked into the watches. There's a little bit more kind of sophistication around the mapping features. In general, the user interface is still a little bit better. It's easier to transfer music across as well if you're using like a Spotify premium account. So yeah, it's got a lot of the same features now as you get on the Phoenix, but the Garmin experience is still that little bit kind of more, I guess, streamlined and sophisticated with them having done all those features for longer and then there's a little bit more depth on things like um kind of body battery stats or a training analysis stats i think you're getting on the garmin side of things so yeah which is why i think the vertex needs this kind of gps um accuracy feature to be a real killer to kind of offer something that garmin code doesn't that will be important to lots of runners obviously also has the battery life which is important as well and it is a massive battery life so we'll give that a good testing uh, before we get to our full review one thing it definitely is is a big step up on the original vertex which like i said i thought was a, a good watch but really didn't justify such a big price tag unless you really needed it's either battery life or the very rugged uh, you know kind of hardy design it had for kind of mountaineering and stuff like that i don't need that i want i want other features um which you are getting now on the vertex too that's it guys that's our quick first run take on the on the chorus vertex 2 we've got loads of testing to come we're really gonna you know put this gps for its paces get the music properly tested do a load of mapped runs all that kind of stuff so yeah do check back for our full review with kieran mike and myself down the line but for now uh, please like subscribe ring the little bell and yeah we will see you next time